and they can navigate only four or five months in the year because there is not enough water for the rest of the year to, to, to take the, the ships. And they say the only, the only reason was that the commission for the people involved in that uh, operation was uh, bigger. Was there uh, a protest against this? It seems there, was, there was a protest. And uh, one of the highest officials in the, in the merchant uh, navy here was um, expelled as a result of the, of the protest because he protested. So, so he was expelled for protesting? For protesting. Not for, not for no. taking the commission? No, not for taking the commission. Well, what he was he expelled by the man who took the commission. <laughs> Despite Paraguay's poverty, her currency, the Guarani, has remained for the years of Stroessner's reign the most stable of South America. It's been pegged at 126 to the dollar. And even today, you can only get uh, about another six on the black market. So for eight shillings, you earn yourself an extra fourpence halfpenny, and it's hardly worth it. The Guarani is known as the little dollar. And indeed, in shape, size, and color, it is exactly like a greenback. These notes are printed in England, uh, expensively printed. The color is good. The feel is good. It really does feel like money. And yet, it's typical of this rather bonkers country that these notes, these expensively produced notes, are worth, how much do you think? Three farthings. I um, don't wish to be any ruder than I normally am, but I would be as happy to have my money in guanis as in sterling at the present time. Roy Gallagher, the New Zealander directing the World Bank cattle development project here, has already handed out six million pounds to Paraguayan farmers and has another three million pounds to give away. So they love him, but the feeling's mutual. When I see what is happening to my own country through a, a weak government who has no policy and is somewhat lacking in ability to take decisions, uh, and what is happening to this, one is going downhill very quickly and the other is going up very quickly. Democracy is a vastly overrated commodity if you want efficiency. But surely no one's ever accused Paraguay of being efficient. No, but if you have a look at what has, it has accomplished uh, in, in the last five years, or the last ten years, give it, because 11 years ago there was nothing. Certainly the Paraguayans are very courteous, but I'm finding dealing with them, trying to get them to do things on time, is an absolutely hair-tearing operation. Well, this is so. Um, and um, there are probably less ulcers here than there are in some other countries of the world. You like give them to other people, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's a matter of how you do things. You do things in a slightly different way, but you can get things done. And how? Well, it's knowing when somebody means what he says. You see, one of the, th one of the most <laughs> exasperating things pe here is, uh, you, for instance, I take my car to the garage, and the man there says, when do you want it? And uh, if I am silly, and if I was most people, I would say, I want it tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, please. And he said, I will deliver it to your house. Nothing happens. His philosophy is quite different. He knows perfectly well that he cannot fix your car. He cannot even touch your car because he's too busy. But if he told you that, you would feel that he didn't want to help you. And you would be unhappy in the meantime. Whereas if he tells you 10 o'clock tomorrow, you are happy until 10 o'clock instead of being worried. And so it goes on. I now avoid this somewhat exasperating experience by saying, no. To me, it is not important. When can you do it? No, no. When do you want it, senor? No, no. To me, it's not important. And he said, 3.30 on Thursday. And 99% of the time, you'll get it, 3.30 on Thursday. I see. A bit of bias for Monday? Certainly. Paraguay is deep in the manana business. The Latin symbol of success is the well-filled waiting room. In anterooms and corridors all over South America, supplicants wait upon Mr. Bigger Than They Are who establishes his position, his importance, his virility by the length of time he keeps them hanging about. The only really busy man in Paraguay has ample justification for making people wait, and he does for hours. Before they reach that regulation weakness of all dictators, his vast office desk. 
On two mornings a month, President Stroessner's open to the public. Delegations, people with problems, admirers with gifts, school children with invitations. He's the automatic godfather of every seventh child. They all wait upon him for a handshake, a bland and thoughtful smile, and a mucho gusto. Audiences start at 6 a.m., so, with the statutory wait, a meeting with the president means getting up at 3.30 a.m., and it's a long haul until siesta time. I've seen and talked to President Stroessner a number of times. Or well, perhaps I should say I've seen and listened to President Stroessner a number of times. He does rather tend to hold the stage, he doesn't listen easily, and he's not a man who gets asked many questions. When he heard my questions, he retreated rather smartly behind the language barrier and asked that they be written out for him. This was done. He then considered them very carefully and wrote out his replies. Here they are. Well, it's not the way we usually do business, but he is the dictator around here. Like many statesmen and politicians in many other lands with which we're all familiar, General Stroessner has mastered the art of saying nothing at some considerable length and with very great emphasis. The president is usually described abroad, at any rate, as the last strong man, the last dictator of Latin America. Um, to what form of government does he think the Paraguayan character is best suited? And he replied, the idea of a strong man to which Europeans refer is disparaging and unbecoming. The history of mankind was not made by weak men. Europe, in this sense, acts as a universal teacher. It would be absurd that a strong and virile nation like Paraguay should have weak leaders with poor ideas. There's no need to state that my nation's inclination is towards traditional democracy. That is why I have expressed more than once that democracy without patriotism does not interest us. Does the president see any possibility in the future that the electorate of Paraguay may decide upon a change of government? I think it's unlikely. And he also thinks so, because he said, the people of Paraguay will not change their route or conduct as long as they're governed by a political party that will never fail the hopes which the whole nation has bestowed upon them. So much for that. Paraguay, I reminded him, has been in a state of emergency for 32 years. Uh, it's renewed constitutionally every 60 days. And I asked the president what or who he was frightened of. And he said, the state of siege in some areas of my country does not mean the suppression of liberties or civil rights. It is only a means by which the government keeps order, justice and peace.